Hi, I'm Dr. Mike Detola, and I'd like to welcome you to this episode of Inside Dentistry's Product Talk. We are on location in Northfield, Illinois, and we're in the office of Dr. Paul Petrangaro. Paul is a diplomat of the International College of Oral Implantologists and is an Inside Dentistry board member. And we're here today to speak with him about Zest Locator FTX Attachment System. Paul, thanks so much for inviting us into your practice today. Really appreciate that. My pleasure to have you. My pleasure. Um, this Zest system, when I think of locators, obviously you think of Zest and uh, attachments. And one of the things about the FTX attachment system that's interesting is that it's kind of a fixed removable yes. hybrid in the sense that it's, it's fixed for the patient. So when the patient's chewing on it, it feels like a fixed prosthesis. But, but then it's really dentist friendly when they come back into the office because any staff member, a hygienist or an assistant can remove it because you don't need to go in with a handpiece and remove composite yes. and take off and take off screws. Tell me a little about your practice and how something like this fits into it. Well, I, yes, I, I agree with what you just said. It's, it, it, it actually has a game changer for full arch prosthesis. Uh, part of a good portion of the practice I do is full arch immediate loading mm -hmm. of all on four, five, six type of prosthesis. And uh, being able to have the flexibility of having our uh, staff do more for us as we're tied up with other things in the practice or other patients are doing different types of procedures is, a, is really a big, big benefit. There's other benefits too that I see though. About 30% of my practice is revision type of work. So we have done a lot of uh, referral work back and forth with some larger organizations where patients have had an all-in-four done and, it, and they've had a failure of an implant or two. And instead of the patients now having to go back and redo the bra, redo the denture, it's an extensive cost. Oh, yeah. you know, we can now convert their you know, preliminary prosthesis and do a quick pickup without having to reinvent the whole prosthesis form. And that's a, for patients, especially where they've invested all this time and effort, and now, you know, two or three years later, they're, they're having to go back and do it again. It's really nice for them to be able to have that. And what I like it about the, the Zest system versus the screw retained type of, a, of a immediate prosthesis is, of course, thinness now of the prosthesis. Right. So instead of having to, you know, your pickup of your implant, if your angle's off or your, you know, the thread time of your implant is a little different and the multi abutment you can't really get the arrangement. Well, now that's all taken out of, you know, we don't have to worry about this anymore. So now, because there's no external screws into the intern or final denture, this can be made much more more thin, more streamlined, and you know, depending on patients like thin dentures, oh, don't yes, they? Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. That's that's another problem is you know really not if if we really don't understand jaw relationships and bite relationships, and you and we're doing these full arch types of prostheses, and and we you know this. I mean, if if you know putting things to the lingual or palatal the ridge because that's where the bone is, really can be complex for the patient. And, uh, and it really doesn't give you a very, very good um, final thickness of the prosthesis, which a lower, you know, patient's tongues are in the way, the you know, upper, you know, you, you've got the lips sound, and, and all these things together are a little problem. And I think those are two real big benefits to, to the, the right. whole zest line that they have. Yeah, like it is crazy this. that a poor, you feel sorry for the patient that this whole, you know, fixed appliance is going to fail because one implant yes. goes bad. It's nice to have a way to be able to retrieve that, and like you said, yes. pick it up intraorally into the zirconia. Um, certainly, we're going to see the ability um, of the the denture housings to be able to rotate. Yes. You know, twenty degrees. We'll see that in this case that you're about to share, and that that makes the surgery easier. You know, but you don't have to get it perfectly angled where you yes. want it to because you have some play and some say in how these are going to be lined up. Well, so, you know, and, and there's one more thing too is that you know. A lot of times we, we forget about some of these things. But when you get involved with full arch prosthesis and, you, and you've got your implant cost, you've got your multi abutment cost, you've got your cylinder cost, you've got the lab cost, you've got the initial prosthesis, you've got the final prosthesis in the bar, you know, this stuff starts to really kind of add up from yeah. the raw cost to even do the procedure and then translation to the patient. You know, one of the things about being able to be more efficient with procedures and products is if we can somehow streamline this product or process, right. where we're, we're being able to do one procedure now instead of three or four, right. and you know, being able to reduce the net cost of the procedure, I think that's huge, and you can do this with the FX2 system. Right, uh, the FTX, you can, you can go start to finish in as little as three appointments, and you're looking five, maybe six, you know, yes. when, you, when you're doing something, uh, when you're gonna do a, full, a true fix, yes. a screw retain fix, so that's nice as well, and you're right, that lower lab bill makes you able to be able to yes. pass on a little bit of the yes, same yes, to yes, uh, yes, yes. the patient. So let's take a look at this case that you did. I see some lower, man, some mandibular teeth there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Those aren't gonna be there very long, are they? Yes, we had, we had initiated done her upper arch with zygoma implants. Okay. 
and now she's converting her lower uh, just, just from her issues about when she wants her bite to be stable in appearance. So one of the things we do in the beginning with a, a full arch prosthesis is we have to take some measurements from our CT scan and generally from the incisive edge of the prosthesis that we're planning or natural teeth, there's a reduction of anywhere from 15 to 18 millimeters of space that we need to reduce the bone. So here we're looking at our, our crestal incision, teeth are removed, and we have our, our prosthesis made from our lab, which is going to be our full denture. Okay. That we'll be picking up with the, with the attachments. And then we have a surgical guide. There's various types of surgical guide. This is a clear acrylic that we're looking at that I can take measurements from my skin. I can measure from the crest of where her incisal edge of her teeth are pre-surgical. And then I can score the bone so that I know how much to reduce. Right. And then with the clear guide, I can put in and I can literally see that I'm there plus the clear aspect that's cut out, right. we're gonna use that to see where our spatial arrangements are of the abutments that we're putting in. That's great. Mm -hmm. So here's after the ridge reduction. So now we've got our measurement from our incisal edge of our denture to the crest of the ridge for prosthetic thickness. And we're looking at the apical aspects of the, the extraction socket. Okay. And then you can see the mental nerve is reflected on each side of the retractor bilaterally. Okay. So now this limits our distal aspect of our implant placement. Okay. So now after ridge reduction, after we've debrided our sites, now we've got the placement of five implants. We're doing it all on five here. Okay. She's a, a double zygoma on the upper left. She's got pre-existing implants from, that were done 10, 12 years ago on the rest of her ridge in all uh, zirconia and ceramic. So we wanna make sure that we've got enough structure on the bottom to be able to hold that, uh, that, that ridge. So we're looking okay. at the implants. So now here are the abutments that are placed. And one of the things that I've learned from doing in several cases now with the system is traditionally in our all on four, we like our posterior implants to be angled, you know, 30, 40 degrees, right. you know, the tilted angle concept. And, um, and then we have different types of multi abutments to be able to convert that and connect that. Well, one of the things that I've learned with the abutments with the system with Zest is we really don't have to do that much tilting. I mean, if we stay within a 17, 20 degree for those posterior implants, right. it's actually ideal right. because what we're gonna be doing is we'll show the cases, we're gonna be uprighting our abutment complex so that we can pick up it to the denture. Right. And some of these higher angles really kind of make that a little bit more, uh, you know, almost blocks it out so that you can't do it. Okay. So that actually makes the surgical process a little simpler too. Um, without having to go bigger angles on the posterior implant. Right, you feel like you can go and have them almost parallel or whatever you need yes. to do. So these kind yes. of pinkish abutments that are on there, those are the F FTX attachments right. that have been screwed down into Correct. place. Mm -hmm. So now we've got our closure through a couple different techniques and mm -hmm. we've got good tissue height to the, uh, the abutment levels of where we're picked up. And then uh, now we're gonna start our prosthetic phase. Okay. So these are spacers that we're going to just putting over the abutments to be able to pick up into the denture so we know where they're at in the, right. in the denture. Okay. And then we'll just go ahead and now we go back to our, uh, we have a verification index when mm -hmm. we start. So uh, the lab makes us a, a verification jig, a, a thicker uh, uh, index that we'll put into the upper teeth so it rests on the upper teeth. We'll take the lower denture, we'll put that into that verification jig. We've got our blue mousse in our denture right. and then we'll have the patient close their jaw into the denture so we're always keeping our vertical consistent. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. So now we know where the, the abutments are. Okay, so we need to go in and uh do a little work on that denture at this yes. point to get so, now we'll so get these are the denture housing caps yes, sitting on top of the FTX abutments. The, the thing about the, the housing caps, which are really good, what we're going to do at this point, uh, earlier we were talking about not having to do very much angling on those posterior right. implants, okay? So the housing caps allow us to rotate now this housing cap so that we can make all of these implants parallel. Right. Okay, which is what we would do the old way with multi bumps and rotating and trying to get the hex. Well, here now we're just literally taking an instrument, holding it and rotating it where we want it to be because we're going to pick these housing caps right. up into the denture. You can almost think of it like a ball and socket where you've got the abutment here and the denture housing cap on top of it. And what you're saying is it'll go 20 degrees in any direction, 360 degrees around. So you can take it and tilt it regardless of where the implant is to try and line those up just with that cap before you pick it up into correct. the denture. Right? Correct, correct. It's a very simplified way of, of you know, getting everything lined up even when the implants aren't it, angled perfectly. It actually, as you said, much easier to deliver now right. versus having to put things on and off and screw them in and then verify where you're at. You're literally looking and you're seeing if things are parallel or not. Right. So as we're looking from the occlusal view now, you can, I can already see with the picture that I've got to take the center one, that's got to be a little bit more uprighted towards the lingual. Yep. 
The back one's got to come a little bit more facial. And, you know, you, you have your system. But that's acceptable. Little, acceptable. That, that'll work now. It'll but, work but now. yeah, it'll you can now. really kind of yes. fine tune it and go in there. Yes. And it's just a matter of taking it with a little instrument and moving it, yes. right? I mean, it's take your finger and just push it exactly. back. Exactly. Take your finger. Yeah. I charge more if I use an instrument. That's why. So now we've had our lab guy who's at the office with us. Oh, nice. Um, and this he's a very, very high skill level uh, uh, removable person. And so they've just cut the housings out. They've given us a little bit of a hole in, in the occlusal aspect to let some of the excess flow out. So when that chair side material gets used to be able to get the denture housing caps into that, it'll flow out on the Yes, we really caps. don't want that to go underneath the abutment right. uh, uh, collar that they have to lock in. Now, another quick thing that we've also picked up with this system is I had the, the lab person doing several cases, I've kind of figured another little uh, a, a pearl here, is to take some of that facial flange away. I can see, and there's a lot So of you can really see where this lines up, because once you do the initial pickup, you know, and you, you've got the, the lowest retentive, uh, uh, almost like um, lab housing in. Right, that yeah, processing ball, that yes, black one, yes. yeah. Exactly. exactly. You know, you, to see this and visualize it, it makes a big difference with this. Because one of the things that we have to correct for some of the little angulation of the abutments is being able to, sometimes we have to seat from the, the angle of the, like the distal ones, those mm -hmm. first, and then over to the anterior. the anterior. Sure. So the, the little bit more accessibility in the system when we're doing the final processing makes a huge benefit. That's really smart. If you had five or six more millimeters of acrylic there, you Can't would see. be able, you're just guessing Can't now, see. right? That's a really smart idea. Or if they made it in clear acrylic. Yes, <laughs> it was, would be better, right. would be better. Would be better. So now we've got the spacers in that yeah. are gonna protect not only the suture line, but we don't want to get any of the chair side material underneath the housing right. that'll lock in. So we put the little spacers on, which are protect, uh, yeah. like, much like you would do with a rubber dam. Right. And right. For a similar yeah. So the blockout spaces just keep you from, that's an awful feeling. As a dentist, you only have to lock something in once yes. before you go, I need to lock. Or we really don't want to go back and put more sutures in. Exactly. <laughs> okay. All right, Did so now here's here? yeah, initial pickup. Okay. okay, so now this will go back to the lab. Uh, clinician who's at the office and they'll start doing all of the prosthetic aspect of they it. They can put the polishing, they'll take the processing balls yes. out, put the polishing caps in so that nothing gets buggered up in there as they clean up yes. all that acrylic and, and get it ready to go. And then that, those are the blue, the low retention balls, Correct. right? Correct. So this generally we will use initially after surgery and uh, depending on the patient's doing, we can leave these in 30 days, mm -hmm. 45 days, a week. It really depends on how to, what the patient's experiencing, if they're getting enough retention or not. Um, so these are going in the day of surgery, okay? We're looking at the undersurface of the denture now. Generally, lower cases, all on four, all on five, we don't like to put molars on the initial prosthesis. Okay. So we're at the premolar range, and you can see the blue mousse underneath is what we're going to use to go ahead and seat it on top of the prosthesis okay. that's there. You were telling me earlier today about a case that you did where you started at the blue low retention balls, and there's a medium and a high retention, and you told me about a patient where you ended up going to the high retention because that's what it took yes. in his mouth to keep those in place. So it's yes. nice to have those options and of course you can mix and match as well you know within Absolutely. a certain case and Absolutely. put a couple high and a couple low in a Absolutely. different place and that's really nice i mean because you know patients you, know, you get done with surgery they they, they leave right you know and generally full arch prosthesis immediate loading prosthesis is uh, a chew uh, no chew liquid diet mm -hmm. uh, now I, most patients as we know don't go all liquids and that's fine i mean they, they can use it there's nothing that's mysterious about loading implants anymore it's it's actually more and more mainstream and should be. But having something where they're compliant with what we're saying is, is a totally different thing after surgery. So, and several of them, especially the one we've, we had to get, we, they were back seven days. Right. You know, and, but it's so simple and easy to change the retentive housing. You just take it right. out, put another one in. So you got the, the blue mousse on top. This is just to protect the denture teeth because you're yes. gonna use the, the seating tool here because yes. you're, you're listening for a click as you do this. Right. You said you start in the posterior and work your way towards the anterior. Right. And when these snap into place, it's, uh, it's a fair amount of effort yes. to get this down, which is why it's yes. fixed to the patient. Yes. The reason we use the blue mousse is to protect the acrylic teeth from not chipping. Right. Um, but once you get your initial alignment of the, the retentive insert on the abutment itself, you know, you can also even see it. You can also get an initial seat of it. Mm -hmm. But the, this little device will, will pull it down harder. And you, it's, a, it's a thud once it happens. It's right. like a thud sound. Um, and when that clips in, with the, the medium to heavy retentive uh, structures, they're not coming up. It's not going anywhere. Yeah. It's not going in. That looks like an after? Immediate post-operative right. cl clinical view. Um, so this patient is uh, now, she's into her healing phase for her lower. This, for all practical purposes, generally in a full arch prosthesis at six weeks, 
we would take the prosthesis off, unscrew it, so I've got to come in, cut the openings away, take right. it off, and we make sure all sutures are gone, uh, clean out the undersurface of the prosthesis at that point, and then um, generally we'll clean the prosthesis, put it back in. And the other thing is, is now if this is even the final initial denture, depending on your level of how you want to deliver the case, depending on your comfort with your technician and what they can do. I mean, this can also be the final process. Right. I saw you can put molars, of course, and have a little bit, you can go back at six weeks. Now you're gonna get pretty much where your tissue's at at six weeks. You can always add a little bit to the flange. And you know, you take that whole second phase of the treatment, you know, definitive impressions, construction of a bar, that can also be taken out in, in different types of case right. types, which is another really good thing to pass on to the patient. Right. You know, to, to make it more affordable for more people. And that's just one more final picture. Yes. I know there's, she's got some upper stuff going on yes. there that you're working with. So I just wanted to uh, take a look and let the viewers see this. This last shot is kind of a cutaway of the FTX um, abutment with the retention ball in the denture housing cap. And so you can see it screws into that cap and there's a little hex on the other side to get it in and out. And the interesting thing is the metal on the housing cap and the metal of the FTX abutment itself, there, that you can see a little black line, that's, that's less than 10 microns of yes. space. So I think sometimes dentists worry on a removable system about having it bounce when the patient chews. But with less than 10 microns, we're talking like the thickness of a human hair, there's no bounce and patient no. that, that chew on these, it feels as fixed as anything else they've had in their mouth with the advantage of being able to simply remove it when they get back in the office. Absolutely true, absolutely true. Well, glad to hear that you've been happy with uh, yes, the cases wonderful. that you've done with this. I think it's, uh, you called it a game changer yes. earlier, and I, I would agree with that. I yes. think it's a fantastic product from the fine people at Zest. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that'll wrap up this edition of Inside Dentistry's Product Talk. On behalf of myself, Paul, and everybody here at Inside Dentistry, I want to thank you for your time and your continued commitment to quality dentistry.